Hello and welcome to another adventure here on my channel. Today I'm going to be starting a three-part series talking about the cults that stemmed from the Harry Potter fandom and we're going to be starting with the Snape Wives. And if you're like, hey, Sarah Jo makeup, what does this have to do with makeup? Welcome to my rebrand. I've decided that instead of being a beauty commentary channel, I really want to lean into the commentary aspect and talk about pop culture, internet culture, basically whatever I find interesting and want to share here on my channel with you. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about this rebrand because I do want to go ahead and get into the content of this video, but there will be more information down in the description for those of you who would like to know more. Also, before I dive in, I have to say that like a lot of people, I grew up loving the Harry Potter series, but that does not mean that I agree with some statements made by the author of said series. And I wanna make it perfectly clear that this channel always has been and always will be a safe and welcoming space for the trans community. And if you have a problem with that, then there is the door. Feel free to exit and think about your bigotry. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into talking about this because a couple weeks ago, I came across this post right here and I have not been able to stop thinking about it because it says, if I had a nickel for every big name Harry Potter fanfic writer who started their own cult, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Uh, yes, it is. And someone commented, oh man, are we talking about Snape wives? Because every time I remember them, I just have to stare off into the distance for a while. I'd have three nickels. And I was like, I have to know more. I have to know more. So I've been researching this and it is a trip. It is some weird shit that happened on the internet over 10 years ago, but I still need to talk about this because it is so weird. So I found this article from Jezebel, which I do not know this publication, but the other sources I found seem to confirm a lot of the information in this article. So I'm gonna read through some of it with you. The whole article will be linked down in the description along with my other sources. And we're just gonna react. I'm gonna show you some of the things I have found and we are just going to experience this together. In the mid to late 2000s, Snape wives were the object of Harry Potter fandom scorn. A Snape wife, for those of you who didn't spend your formative years on HP focused live journal communities, is a woman who is overly invested in Severus Snape, the anti-hero of JK Rowling's Harry Potter series, often to the point of justifying his worst behavior. These women largely haunted live journal and fan forums celebrating the mysterious dark horse, but a smaller group was even more ardent in their fandom. A definition in Urban Dictionary sheds some additional light. A group of middle-aged women on the internet who believe they are all married to Severus Snape from the Harry Potter books on the astral plane. They have real life meetings where they take turns channeling the spirit of Snape so they can have wedding ceremonies with him. And I went and looked this up on Urban Dictionary and that definition is there posted in 2008. So that's probably about the time this was happening and that seems to line up with the rest of the timeline. But anyway, yeah, that is what Snape wives are. A group of women who believed they were married to Severus Snape on the astral plane, that he was a being that existed separate of the Harry Potter universe that somehow JK Rowling had tapped into to include in her story. They don't believe all of Harry Potter is true, just Severus Snape exists as some sort of godlike figure and that they are somehow married to him, all of them, or several of them at least. According to another entry on Urban Dictionary, Snape wives built domestic and or online shrines to Snape by making collages, photoshopping pictures of oneself and Snape together. I found some of these and I have to show you because they are peak mid OOs photoshopping and I did blur out the women's faces because this video isn't about them as individuals but about this phenomenon and I just have to show you these pictures because they are wonderful. I was only able to find a few but Wow. <laughs> I mean, I love a fan edit. That's actually where I learned to Photoshop. The reason I can make my thumbnails for this video is because I used to fan edit characters together, mostly Megan Castiel from Supernatural, but that's a thing I used to do. So I understand, but I've never thought I want to Photoshop myself into this go off, I guess. I, it's beautiful. I find it hilarious and beautiful, but it gets worse. They also married Snape, complete with wedding vows and fate photos. I found 
some of the wedding vows. And if you think that just because I'm an actress, I'm gonna go steal my mom's outfit from her wedding and then come on here and do this as a monologue complete with badly photoshopped Severus Snape, then you know me very well. Beloved Severus, finally, we stand here with you, side by side, ready to seal our sacred commitment. As a token of our love and the proof of our eternal fidelity to you, here are our vows to you, only love strong and cherished. Our beloved Severus, we, Lily Evans and Rose, pledge these sacred vows. We'll always love you in good and bad times, in sickness and in health, no matter what will come on our path. We'll always stand loyal beside you, proud to wear your name and to defend your honor. We'll always give you the best of us and hide nothing. We'll always provide you with anything you need and look after you in the best way we can. We will always be faithful to you and only you in body, mind, and soul. We will always obey you and heed all of your words, trying to fulfill any wish or need you might have. We will always be proud to be your loving wife. Severus Prince, from here into eternity, always. May these vows be closed in our hearts and seal our bond forever, never to be broken by anything in this world or another. We are now joined in sacred marriage. And scene. I am genuinely so excited to film that. I think it's gonna be so much fun. And shout out to my mom for letting me borrow her wedding outfit, as well as more stereotypical fandom behavior like writing fan fiction and poetry. If that wasn't enough, some self-described Snape wives attempted to channel the spirit of Severus Snape for purposes ranging from encouragement completing household chores and hobbies to spicing up their sex lives. Now, if you and your partner want to do some kinky Harry Potter based role play, like by all means, have at it, have a good time. I am happy for you, you nerds finding love. Channeling the spirit of Snape. It just, it just seems like a weird violation of a lot of traditional African and Asian religions. I took this really interesting anthropology course on the anthropology of death, and I read some articles about channeling ancestral spirits and stuff like that. And this just seems like such a weird perversion of that, like channeling the spirit of a fictional character so you can have sex with him. And it keeps going, it keeps going. And that's the wildest part about this is there's so much to this. These women had a deeply personal desire to protect Snape. They reminded me of the women who were overly empathetic towards the romanticizing the pair as broody and sad. Though not as extreme, Snape wives are similarly attracted by the stereotypical portrayal of masculinity and rationalize Snape's worst transgressions, finding fault with all who may have wronged them. Snape, a cruel but compelling character, a personal favorite of mine, was thus rendered into a Byronic hero, his angst so fetishized that he became an alluring, sullen bad boy who was simply misunderstood. Now, I will fully admit Snape is my favorite character from the Harry Potter series. And especially in middle school, I had a huge crush on him because I was also very bullied and Alan Rickman is hot and Snape is a very interesting character. That's why he's always been my favorite because he is not this misunderstood hero. He is kind of a terrible person who also did a lot of good things. Or maybe he's kind of a good person who did a lot of bad things. There is so much complexity to the character of Severus Snape, and that's what I like about him. He is not good, he is not bad. He is interesting. And it's like by doing this, by saying he's the sullen bad boy who's misunderstood, you take away the interesting part of the character. And it's just like, why? So even on a fandom level, even setting aside the believing he is real and channeling him, the spirit of Snape, I still don't agree with their characterization 
of this character. The most notorious Snape wives were far more extreme in their interest in Snape, an obsession that was documented in a 2013 academic paper by Zoe Alderton of the University of Sydney, which yes, I have linked down below if you want to check it out, it is one of my sources. Alderton described Snape Wife's devotion to the fictional character as a religion of sorts, deeming them Snapists who followed Snapism as opposed to Snape Wives. See, it does have that religious undertone thing. She followed the online chatter of three women who I'm not gonna name, who did in fact claim that Snape spoke to and through them, that he existed independently of JK Rowling and that they felt submissive to him. Their blog and forum posts acted as both religious text and place of worship, where they shared their most erotic Snape-related fantasies in an arena of like-minded followers. I mean, if you wanna write and read kinky Snape fan fiction, by all means, go at it. I have partooken in such activities through my development, but, but like, there's a difference between being like, I'm into this character and I want to read some fanfic about it versus worshipping a character. Oh, I, I don't, I don't even know. Like, I've been researching this for days and I just still don't know how to process any of this because it is wild. It is just so wild. One of them believed that she was so in tune with Snape that he allowed her to introduce new codes of conduct and beliefs into the group, a religious doctrine of sorts. For example, she announces that Snape despises annoying, giggling fangirls whom think they understand him as being a cute, fluffy being. Isn't that what this article just said? I'm so confused as to their characterization of Snape. Because on one hand, they have that whole Byronic hero, misunderstood, angsty, sad boy. And on the other hand, they're like, he's this cruel, erotic, controlling master who doesn't like the giggling fangirls. Like, I guess those don't have to be mutually exclusive, but I'm very confused as to their characterization of this character. And either way, I don't agree with it. As Snape, she also makes clear, I only give audience to those women that are strong and able to withstand my fierce temper and do as I say. I coldly ignore those vain, simpering females that hold a thought like a leaky sieve. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that word. S-I-E-V-E. -E. This is like really sexist too. Like very feminine women. No, Snape doesn't like them. You can't be like them. We're not like other girls, we're Snape wives. Thus, she is able to use her channeling to define who is and who is not an appropriate Snape devotee. Through her, Snape declares, I can teach you how to feel, teach you how to think. To submit to him is to accept this channeled wisdom. Kinky? And then it talks a little bit about how this can be seen as like misogynistic to sort of make fun of this line of thinking and that it's similar to men who assemble fantasy football leagues or get really invested in sports. And then the article goes on, still, it's less likely that fans of a beloved athlete believe that the figure to whom they are devoted can inhabit the body of their romantic partner during sex. But this was common among the original Snape wives. Master would take over for my hubby and have fun, one of them wrote. Basically, my hubby would do things in ways that only master can and could. Here, the master is Snape, who, if you recall, is a fictional character. Again, if y'all want to do some kinky role playing, go for it. Have fun. Enjoy your sex life. But master would take over for my hubby and have fun that's a one hit ko like i've read that before and it's still a one hit ko <laughs> there was obviously some real resonance with the idea that he was just absolutely in charge and that he was an incredibly domineering fearful force 
Alderton told me. I think there's a lot of people who feel sexually attracted to that, but also kind of socially attracted to it. Like gathering around this amazing, domineering, real kind of alpha character, even though he's also brooding and on the sidelines. I think people like that combination. But these women's fantasies, along with their photoshopped images of themselves alongside Alan Rickman's on-screen portrayal of Snape, tended to come across as a fantasy about Rickman above all else. Fair. Alan Rickman was Alan Rickman. And besides just being a huge middle school crush of mine, he genuinely was such an amazing actor and I've learned so much from watching his movies. He is one of the main reasons I went to acting school and fell in love with acting because I loved his work so much and I learned so much from it. So rip to Alan Rickman, that one hit me hard. I remember the day I found out he had passed, my mom woke me up and was like, hey, come cuddle. And I was like, am I in trouble? And she was like, no. And she told me Alan Rickman died. And I was like, I would have rather been in trouble. He was a truly great actor. And I am kind of sad I just never got to thank him for it. So I guess we are going to be obsessed with an actor. He's not a bad choice, even though it's more the character. I don't know. But if this whole Snape Wives thing is some kind of fantasy about Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman is an actual human being who existed and is definitely not some sort of astral plane godlike figure who is, I don't know. I don't know, I'm trying to justify this. I'm trying to put some logic into this when there's clearly no logic. Their disdain towards those who simply didn't understand Snape was almost as deep as their disdain toward James and his friends, the Marauders, who bullied Snape as teens. But it was their dislike of Lily that really ground our gears. They often characterized Lily as a foolish, misguided girl who was not empathetic enough of Snape's inner turmoil, unlike them. Her needs and boundaries as a marginalized person in this fictional setting were not as important as Snape's feelings. Refusing to forgive Snape for calling her a slur and having the audacity to marry Snape's former bully was a betrayal on top of betrayal on top of betrayal. Their analysis of Lily came across as both misogynistic and racially insensitive. While these fans accepted or even enjoyed Snape's redemptive arc that highlighted his love for Lily, it always seemed as if their dislike of Lily stemmed from this idea that if they were in her shoes, they would have treated Snape with the care, the nurturing he deserved. This reimagining of Lily as a more empathetic young woman has been a frequent theme in fan fiction as well, suggesting that Lily's change of heart could have saved Snape from himself. How are you going to love Snape and hate Lily? Like, as someone who loves Snape, like, he's my favorite character, and as terrible as he is, as interesting as it is, like, part of me I wants him to have some sort of happiness, you know? Like when you're really invested in a character, you're like, you're so interesting. I, I, I'm cheering for you to be good, to do good, to do better and end up happy. Like you have to ship Snilly, right? Like you, you would have to want him to have some sort of happiness, right? You would have to like Lily, right? I love Snilly. How do you love Snape and hate Lily? Like Lily is a fantastic character. I, uh, and Lily had every right to marry James Potter and not forgive Snape for what he did. Absolutely every right after how he treated her. Does that mean I don't enjoy fan fiction where he makes it up, realizes his mistake, moves on, doesn't make his mistake, does better? Of course I do, but like, how are you not gonna like Lily? Okay, honestly, I have a Zoom French class in like four minutes, so I'm gonna pause this, come back when I'm done and wrap this video up, so. For you, it will be no time at all, but for me, BRB. All right, I made some coffee, did my French class, bonjour mon petit croissants, and now let's get right back into this. Maybe it was much easier to empathize and even excuse Snape's behavior and his seduction by the dark in the 2000s, when the trope of monstrous jocks and vicious it girls reigned supreme. But fandom has changed significantly in the last decade, and so has the world and politics that influence it. Instead of the echo chambers of live journal and forums, today's platforms allow a diversity of voices and ideas. Fandom chatter isn't exclusive to shut-ins spending too much time online, and white women are no longer the sole gatekeepers. Also, this article has some really interesting discussion about the author's feelings as a marginalized person dealing with the rhetoric at the time that was basically thinly veiled discussions about racism itself. I didn't know exactly how to talk about it in this video, so I did leave those parts out of the discussion of this article, but it's really interesting and I do highly recommend reading the article in its entirety just for that alone.
I have a sneaking feeling that Snape wives morphed and now are simply this generation's Kylo Ren superfans who also revel in sexualizing the brooding dark energy of the Star Wars villain played by Adam Driver. Driver's own features are also, ironically, Snape-like. Maybe I'm wrong, but there will always be a mysterious brooding fictional man whom a subset of women feel compelled to protect and they'll happily do whatever mental gymnastics are needed to justify their worst behavior. And I think that's definitely true that there is a lot of this romanticizing of these dark, villainous, broody, sad boys that are played by actors who are pretty attractive and the character would not be nearly as loved if the actor was not so attractive. But we're gonna move away from this article because thanks to the Wayback Machine, I actually was able to find some posts from this time from Snape Wives, what they were saying and it's interesting. So this is from Snape Maniac's live journal profile from 2006. And just let me read you some of this. I believe that Severus Snape exists independently of JKR. He is a living, feeling spirit. I believe anything is possible and that Severus does visit those he chooses to. <laughs> oh God. I also believe that Severus Snape is a spider, that his totem creature is the ever wary spider. He must weave his webs to survive. I am terrified of spiders and go into fits when I see one larger than a quarter. Brr. However, for Severus, I will say that he is one spider that I love. I wouldn't mind being trapped in his web. Like, like if you didn't know, if you didn't know that they were grown adult women who believed him to be real, like the, the first sentence in this post. This could easily just be like a teenager, an emo teenager writing some like bad poetry on the internet. And that would be fine. But the context just makes it so weird. So weird. I am a Snape maniac. Long reign Snape. Do not shorten Severus Snape's name or cutesify it. This shows ultra disrespect to him, and it makes you as bad as those who harassed him at Hogwarts. Now I want to call him Snapey the rest of this video, just because they told me not to, and that is who I am as a person. Anyway, Severus Snape would not like his name shortened. Common sense would tell you this, and to add a Y at the end of it is a travesty. A travesty. Just what do you think he is? A fluffy bunny? I am sorry, but the man is harsh and would have your head on his lab table if you walked up to him and disrespected him in such a fashion. Think about it. He is not someone to be taken lightly or made fun of. He loathes being made fun of. And if you are his true fan, you would know this much about him. Severus Snape will not be dominated by anyone or anything. He is master of his domain and he is in control at all times until Voldemort killed him with Nagini, but okay. Never think that he will allow himself to be dominated again. I'm sorry, that sounds like inappropriate. Anyway. And I am not counting LV, I assume that's Lord Voldemort, but everyone else who thinks that he will submit to their ways. For Okay, he will not be dominated, except for Lord Voldemort. Except for that, that's fine. And honestly, probably Lily. So besides that, no one else. Not you. The male is not a submissive type. Why, why did you just refer to him as the male? What? Snape? Severus? He? The, the male. The male is not a submissive type. He will dominate those around him or he will ignore them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, uh, that was beautiful. I don't know what to say at this point, man. I don't know what to say. I mean, I did find this meme that says the face you make when you look up Snape wives and it's, it's pretty accurate because that, I think that's how I feel on the inside. It's just like, what? <laughs> but they did eventually fall. So let's talk about decline, the end of an era. After the fan war, which is just casually dropped in there, but anyway. After the fan war, community participation slowly dwindled. Snapeism was still going strong though, just not as strong as it used to be. The real nail in the coffin didn't come until later, when something terrible happened. One of the wives fell in love with someone else. The drama. If you're wondering if one of the Snape wives realized that this was all insane and found herself an actual physical significant other, well, I respect your optimism. 
Unfortunately, that's incorrect. By fell in love with someone else, I mean stopped worshipping Snape so she could worship Jethro Gibbs from NCIS instead. <laughs> Okay. Stopped worshipping Snape so she could worship Jethro Gibbs from NCIS instead. After all, this is a religion we're talking about. You can't be a Catholic and a Protestant at the same time, and you can't worship Snape and Gibbs at the same time. With all of the big name fans gone or fighting with each other, Snapeism kind of fell apart. To Snapeus, it was kind of like the Pope suddenly converting to another faith. The Jethro Gibbs incident was the nail in the coffin for the religion, and with all the important leaders gone, the others just kind of stopped caring. There may be one or two wayward Snapeus out there in the labyrinths of Live Journal, but they certainly don't have half as much of an impact now as they did back then. The Church of Snapeism is, for all intents and purposes, gone. Bad photoshops of Snape with his astral plane lovers are still scattered across the internet, laying amidst prayers and fanfiction and strange combinations of them both, but the church itself has faded into obscurity like some pagan religion of old. What a wild ride. Like, it has been a truly wild ride making this video. I hope I've been able to impart on you some of the wild ride for yourself going through this with me because what? I, I, I don't know where to land with this because genuinely this is just one of those weird things that happened in some corner of the internet like 10 years ago and then it all kind of fell apart like of course it would and now here we are. The world moved on like there was never a cult to Snape and I know it really doesn't affect my life it doesn't affect anyone's life by now. But I'm still left like, what? What do I do with this now? Why? <laughs> huh? <laughs> After doing all this research, I still have so many questions that will never be answered that I don't know if I want answered because the questions themselves are just so much more fun. But there we go. That is the history, the wild ride, the cult that is Snape wives. And now it is over. You have this information. We have suffered together. We have hopefully laughed together. We can all just move on and know that nothing like this will ever happen again. If you are on the series that will not be named because the author is a transphobic piece of shit forums in the early aughts, bear with me for a second. For reasons that are currently unclear to me, the almighty algorithm has placed me on shifter TikTok or desired reality TikTok. If you're as out of the loop as I am, the condensed explanation appears to be that we are capable of quite literally mentally shifting into different realities, specifically the realities of our favorite stories. And once we're in those realities, we can participate and do things like have romantic relationships with our favorite characters. And I'm just curious, fellow HP fandom forum veterans, um, does anyone else remember the Snape Wives? Time is a circle. Okay. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope you are enjoying this rebrand, the new Sarah Jo, as much as I'm enjoying making the content. And I will see you all next time. Just for fun, I am going to link my favorite Snape and Lily fanfiction down in the comments. I think the writing is phenomenal, the characterization is really good, and it's just a really well-written fanfiction. It's called The Peace Not Promised, and I highly, highly recommend it. It's super long, though, but really, really.